For decades, Kenyan runners have dominated athletics. And one name which has been synonymous with glittering success throughout her career is Faith Kipiegon. Kenya's middle distance running queen had an exceptionally brilliant 2023, breaking three world records in her 1500 meter specialty, the track mile, and also the 5000 meters. But the dominance of international women's sport by Kenyan athletes doesn't end on the track. And one team which has stood head and shoulders above the rest in African competitions is the Kenya women's volleyball team, the Malkia Strikers. The backbone of the team in recent years has been its captain, Mercy Moim, whose decorated career has spanned two decades. Well, on this special edition of Talk Africa, we spend time with these two outstanding athletes and find out how they got to the pinnacle of their careers, what drives them and what keeps them at the top of their game. I'm Beatrice Marshall from Eldoret in Kenya. Welcome to Talk Africa. Faith Kipiagon has been running in international meets for a decade and a half. She had her first taste of international competition in 2010 when she ran barefoot at the World Cross Country Championships in Poland and finished fourth in the junior category. A year later at the World Youth Championships in France, she broke the junior 1500 meters world record on her way to a first gold medal. We visited Faith to find out how her phenomenal journey began. Faith, thank you very much for welcoming us to your home. And You're first welcome. of all, congratulations for a phenomenal 2023. Thank you. You're I welcome. want to start uh, by going back to the, be the very beginning and your childhood. Where did you grow up? Mm, Faith Kibiagon grew up in a small village called um, Tebara. Uh, it's in Indabibit uh, village. Um, it's in uh, Nakuru County. Uh, and that is where my parents live. Uh, what was the inspiration for, for running? Like, when did it all begin? You know, everybody has a story that I was maybe watching people run or so forth. Where did it start for you? Uh, for me, uh, I can say I started when I was very young. I started running when I was in primary school in Chebara, running around the school uh, without knowing one day, one time, I would be Olympic champion or world champion. So I used to run a school competition uh, and school uh, uh, training where we, you, we usually go like uh, two kilometers around the school and go back. We had a very strict teacher where he was normally telling us to go around the school and, and just it was like just fun. So we, I, I didn't know it was uh, something which will bring me uh, food on the table. So tell me about your childhood a little bit because I understand that uh, your family is really an athletic family. I can say I inherited the talent from my father. My father used to run when he was uh, when he was still in school as well, uh, but he didn't uh, reach the level where I am. But I think we are um, we inherited because we are three in our family. Uh, I have my sister called Beatrice Chepkemo. She runs 21 kilometers and also 10 kilometers. And also I have a sister called Josephine, so she does marathon and also half. So I think we, inred we inherited from our family, we are from our father. And I've watched you training, I've watched your races over the years, and, and it seems like you put so much intensity into your, your, your work, into your running. So tell me about the other side. What do you do to relax? How do you spend your days when you're not on the track? I can say at the moment uh, I spend a lot of time with my daughter um, when I'm out of competition, let's say when I'm off season, I spend a lot with Aline, my daughter, and uh, as well visiting my family, visiting my grandmother, uh, like last time I visited my grandmother in Danaifle, so um, that is how I spend my time uh, when I'm out of competition and also going for vacation at least to relax my uh, my mind and at least have fun after uh, a tough season. I know you've been um, an athlete for so long now for over 15 years 
was there something else? Was it was this always your dream, or there was something else you ha you would have wanted to do as a career? Ah, uh, oh my God! Yeah, that is a very tough question. But uh, when I was young, I used to do uh, football. Uh, when I was in school as well, as I told you earlier, when you are in school, you can do anything. You can do. I was doing gymnastics. I was doing f uh, football and also athletics. So um, I wanted, you know to grow up and see uh, what I was capable of doing and I think athletics was the highest one so I chose athletics and I took it as as my profession and and I took it as uh, something which will put food and change uh, the background of my family that's why I chose athletics so all eyes are now on uh, Paris uh, 2024 and, and, and of course for you there is so much expectation there is so much pressure how do you cope with that pressure to perform for me, I don't have any pressure uh, going to Olympics. It's only that to stay fit. When I'm healthy, I know what I'm capable of doing. And uh, and and I put all my mind towards Olympic, knowing that uh, to defend the title is not easy. And I swore to, to be on top there, to be a three times Olympic champion is not easy. So for me, I'm now training hard and focusing my uh, all my <coughs> training and my mind that knowing that there is something special coming up, which is this year 2024 Barrier Olympics. And it's a big fish, of course, and uh, everybody is going for that fish. You're talking about going for that fish. What would it mean, though? What would winning a third straight Olympic uh, mean for you? Uh, for me, it will mean a lot, especially if I win my title. Uh, it will be really, really motivative, uh, especially for the young young girls and young women around the world uh, to know that uh, everything is possible in life. And for me, going to uh, Paris, uh, especially defending my title in 1500, I think it will be history because I don't think there's uh, somebody else which have, uh, she or he have uh, defended three times. So I think uh, if I defend that title in 1500, I think it will be history. So, Faith, I want to know about uh, the moment when you came into the limelight, when you were discovered. Who discovered you? How were you discovered? And how did that um, help in your career trajectory? I think for me, how I started, it's, uh, it's a long story. I started in Jebara and uh, I moved to DEP where I got a sponsor, where I um, called Coach, he, called, he was Coach called Jeb Coin who helped me to, to get into uh, DP primary school where I used to study and sleep in, uh, sleep in school and go to training. So I was given a little bit of time uh, from training and also going to class. And then I didn't stay long in uh, DP primary school in Olegurwane. I moved to Keringit uh, Estate Primary School where I schooled from class 6 to class 8 and uh, Charles Ngeno was the coach. And I think I stayed, Coach Charles Ngeno coached me for a long time. So he coached me and I made the team to 2010 uh, World Cross Country in uh, Bitcoin, Poland. And, uh, and started from there, 2010, 2011. So I think Charles put me in a level where uh, I am now. And, uh, and then I joined Patrick in 2019. So I've been with Patrick until now. Uh, I'm, my coach is Patrick Sang, and I'm seeing myself being trained by Patrick uh, to join the Elliot Footsteps. So Faith, you talk about uh, when you started running, you were running barefoot. Why was that? I think for me, uh, running barefooted, uh, and I think I have took it as motivation and, and, um, and something which has motivated me to where I am now, you know. Running as a girl, small girl, uh, barefooted and winning gold medal in uh, in in uh, world cross country in Punta Umbria, Spain, and also beat Coast Poland running barefooted. I think um, that picture still motivates me a lot. And I can say I was uh, comfortable, though I was still finding ways to get myself a sponsor and at the same time finding ways to be a profession in athletics. But I, by then I was still in school, you know, and I didn't have let's say, uh, a good shoes to run on. 
But in 2011 in Punta Umbria, I ran barefooted, but I had a sponsor uh, already, Nike. Uh, and Nike gave me a shoe, but I was really, really comfortable running barefoot. So I told Nike, I really appreciate uh, the shoe, but I think I'm comfortable and I will, go, I will win the gold medal barefooted. And I, I did. The world knows about Faith Keep Your Gone, the athlete, the best 1500 meters uh, champion of all time. What else? What is it that the world doesn't know about Faith Keep Your Gone? Uh, oh my goodness. Um, I think the world, the world knows Faith Keep Your Gone as an elite athlete, but I think the world doesn't know that Faith likes smiling a lot. <laughs> You have a great smile, Faith. <laughs> Thank well, you. Faith, now you run professionally. What does it take? I mean, like you wake up in the morning, you come and train. How many hours does it take? How many hours do you rest? And then what do you do for the rest of the day? Um, I can say it takes dedication, it takes hard work. Um, and as well, you know, waking up in, uh, early in the morning to come to the track or to go to the forest to run uh, easy run or, or long run. It's the love of sport we have, and also it give, um, give us something on the table. So that's why we like, uh, especially me, I like running, because it's really, uh, it has brought me from where I started to where I am now, and still, that is what still uh, pushed me towards a bright future. Can you uh, think back to um, a moment that you would say, this was my greatest moment, or this was my proudest moment in my career so far? Um, for me, I can say 2023 uh, World Record was my highest. Uh, I can say I have been really, really looking forward to break the 1500 World Record. Uh, you know, being Olympic champion, being 50, uh, World Champion in 1500, and you are like, but not a World Record holder. But so you see, in 2023, my main focus was to break a world record so i think that was my my highest uh, moments ever uh, since uh, i started my career and i can say the lowest moment is whereby uh, in 2019 i came back from maternity leave and went to a world championship in uh, doha and i was not really really strong I, I don't know i don't know if it is the lowest moment or it was um, a challenging moment. A challenging moment. <laughs> I don't know, mm -hmm. but uh, in my career, I can say a lowest moment because you know, coming from maternity leave and going uh, to world championship with injury, and nobody knows. It's only you and your coach and your team knows that you have something, but you don't want to lose this championship because you are coming back from uh, maternity leave. So for me, I still say it was low moment, but at the same time. You've had a fabulous career uh, so far, and I'm sure there are other great moments that are going to be coming up ahead. But you know, we lo you look at Kenya especially, yeah, and this region where we are, it produces thousands of, of, of athletes. You've been doing this, you've been running for over 15 years. What does it take um, to keep you at the top? Like, you know, how, what is it that differentiates you from um, other people? What is it that differentiates the elite athletes uh, from other people, those that have you know, managed to stay at the top for so long? Um, what I can say uh, is discipline matters a lot. You know? We have many athletes, we have elite athletes, many elite athletes, especially in our region or in our country. But I think if you don't have discipline and hard work, if you are not knowing what you want to do or you are not serious in what you do, uh, especially in athletics, I don't think you are going anywhere. But if you have discipline and you are working hard for it and you know that this is my passion, this is my career and it's my office, I think it will drive you to where you, are, you want to be. So what would you say to other young athletes that are upcoming? What, what would be a message to them? My message to the young athletes is to be themselves, to, to, to be themselves, to be disciplined, to work to their goals. 
I think if you have a goal that this is what I want in, 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 in the future and this is what I want in my career to break a world record or to win Olympic gold medal, I think the first thing is discipline. If you don't have discipline but you have potential of doing that thing, I don't think you will make it before, uh, without discipline. And we saw uh, quite a number of uh, young athletes actually training here uh, in different um, aspects of, of their career. What would you say are some of the big challenges that face uh, such young athletes and you know, how to overcome that and what really needs to be done for them? Especially when they are coming up, you know, once you've made it, um, you have so much support, you have financial support, you have the coaches, but what about the younger ones? You know what I normally advise the young, the young people in sports, uh, especially young girls, is to be themselves. It's the first thing to be yourself as a girl. You know, you are capable of being on top. If somebody tells you what to do and you have, you have set your goal that this is what I want, and nobody will disturb your mind or nobody will uh, tell you to do what you want to do, you, you, what you don't want to do, I don't think you will mess up. But if you agree somebody to tell you, do this as a young girl, you will never read your calls. Because nowadays, if you see many girls are coming to junior category and then uh, reaching senior category, we don't have youths anymore. Mm -hmm. But I think what I normally advise girls is to be themselves. Uh, listen to what your coach is telling you. Uh, train hard, be disciplined, and just focus for your goals. Other things will follow. All right. Thank you so much, Faith. I wish you all the best uh, in you. the upcoming Olympics and uh, good luck in your future career as well. Thank you. We're going to take a short break now and we'll be back with Mercy Moim, the decorated team captain of the reigning Women's African Volleyball Champions, to stay with us. Leading a team is a difficult job, but leading a team to become African champions is nothing short of phenomenal. The Kenya women's volleyball team has won the African championships a record 10 times. In 2023, the Malkia strikers were crowned the women's African volleyball champions again and qualified for the 2024 Olympics in Paris. Mercy Moim has been the Kenya volleyball team's captain since 2016 and her numerous awards playing for the Kenya national team speak of a captain who leads by example. Mercy, thank you very much for uh, talking to us today. I want to start by knowing you a little bit. Tell me about your background. Where did you grow up? How was your childhood like? I was Kaboywa in Mount Delgon. I was in Kaboywa Primary School, from nursery school to class eight. And then during my primary school, my elder sister was play volleyball. And then my cousin was a coach. So then because of my height, because I can play volleyball, but I was playing volleyball, I was playing uh, uh, football, as I was playing as a goalkeeper, when I was playing netball, when I was playing shooter, when I was playing your time. So, but at the end of the day, I was playing volleyball, because of my height, and then also the person who was playing is my cousin, so I was playing volleyball. Mm -hmm. How long have you been playing volleyball for? I think for from high school up to now, it's like uh, 17 years in volleyball, active volleyball. Yeah, so uh, okay, say high school and primary, I think it's more than 20 years. More than 20 years. Tell me about how you debuted for the Kenyan team. How did this happen? Because you were playing in school, um, you were being mentored by your cousin, by your sister. But how did you enter the Kenyan team? Yeah, I think like uh, Kuchesa High School, 
ilikuwa most of the time coaches from different clubs walikuwa wanakuja kama tuko kwa professional ama nationals and then wana wana kila team and then also tulikuwa na tournament ilikuwa kila county so unapata in high school tunaenda tournament so ile time unacheza kuna coach anaona ah huyo anaweza the height iko sawa game yake iko sawa and then even you tulingia kwa national teams mm -hmm. Tell me about your training regiments because uh, to be a world-class athlete, it really needs a lot of dedication. It needs a lot of uh, stamina. What sort of training do you have? I think first of all, you have to uh, train for yourself. You cannot depend on a coach. Because someone like me, uh, I normally start my training maybe at 5 in the morning or 4 in the morning. So I normally wake up. I prepare myself, I, went, I go to the gym, I do my own workout before coach Afike. Like now we have like two hours training, so two hours training is not enough for you to perfect or to be a good player. So you have to do extra. Maybe kama si jamuka iyo morning, I have to go and work after training your coach, maybe in the evening. So you have to add something, not like a, only a coaching training. Yeah. So you know you've been the captain of Malkia Striker since 2016. Tell me about some of your challenges and some of your proudest moments. Uh, being a captain, ni kaa kuwa mama ama kuwa baba kwa family. Mm -hmm. So kuna challenges, watoto ndakana ujio mtoto wako, uwe anakuanga aje, uwe anakuanga aje, then mood za watu hii, ni kaa tu ya puya wachesa, aje ya wasichana. Sunajua nga naipi ya wasichana, sisi emu kama ya boys. Mtu leo amekuja na mood zake, you have to talk to her, you have to encourage her. And then the moment poor and he qualify when the Olympic 2020. Kwa sababu, to measure it for a long time. To qualify when the Olympic year Tokyo 2020. And then also to be kwa to ki atu kwa na perform Cup of Nation. So after like to kwa me to trophy for nine years. Nine nine me me to for like for like five years. Ile kushi na juice Cameroon tena ile kwa a bit. A plus to us, and then also qualify for Paris 2024. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. The moment when you walk onto the pitch, how does that feel like for you? Uh, for me, because I'm a prayerful woman, I normally believe. Before ninge koyo wanja na jwa leo, kuna kushita na leo kuna kushi, ushindwa. Uh, it depends on like uh, my prayer and the dream I normally have. Even my teammate on the hey, Leo, and Dodo, you may coach on our very mequaivon and Yambe, ah, Leo to Nenda Kushinda. So Niko and Ben Dodo, you may quaivon and Yambe, eh, Leo Ningumu, but Nenda Kukaza. So before Ninga Koyo, one Jana Jua. And Shanga and a god, a shiny but a jibu, so Niking Yapo, Niko to Sah. Especially in Kwe Cameroon, Nilikwa Nail hundred per cent to Nenda Kushinda and Nanda qualify, Benda Paris. Mm -hmm. So you've talked about your high moments um, in your career. What are some of the lowest moments for you? Yeah, I think the first one was losing like a, a game in Algeria to qualify for the Olympics. Yeah, that time. And then uh, 2013, I lost my mom. And then I got a game the same, same week when I joined the hardest moment. Uh, team ilikuwa ndaka ukuli fi ilikuwa cup of nation and then team ina kutekemea the same same day na kuna semifinals una lose your mom ilikuwa the painful thing in my life and also the other time I lost my mother-in-law and then I lost my husband the same man. Kole sana. I'm okay. <laughs> I'm okay. So you've been playing volleyball now for 17 years. What do you attribute uh, to the longevity of your career? How have you managed to stay at the top of your game for so long? I think first of all, it's a discipline. And then I think it's a makitambo. Ile kitu unaweka kwa mdomo yako. Because unapata 90% nowadays of our youth players, muta is just more than two years, some are three. Kasababu ya ile kitu unaeka kuna kula. And then ile friends unapata after high school. Ndiyo most people unapote sanga watu hii umona. And then another thing ni some coaches. Uh, wanaenda kukojwa toto shule. 
and then mtoto anaambia mtu hii you are better than moi mumeona and and yet hata ujafika like 10% and moi is 100% umeona and then mtu anatoka shule akijua ah I'm better than moi hata hata moi akifanya nini coach atanibeba umeona hiyo ndio kitu imearibu size the junior teams let junior players on atoka high school and then another thing ni umesema kitu kama discipline alafu mostly watoto sasa hii wanatoka shule wanapata pesa umeona unatoka shule unasaini wa contract like 50 to 60000 so mtoto anaona tu ako ina convert son volleyball ikiwa ama nicheze ama nisicheze si muhimu kwa kwa uwanja mimi nimepata hiyo pesa so hii ndio kitu size inaribu watu wao kutoka shule hakuna ile ku hustle mtoto anakuja kama amepata nini amepata ndo Did you ever want to do anything else apart from volleyball? Yeah, for now nimeenda coaching international level 1 coaching course. Yeah, and then I have my own foundation, Masimo in foundation. So, nyende ni vitu na work na sasa hivi. What is the Masimo in foundation about? Uh it's about like uh wasichana because most of the most of our um, girls especially in Mount Elgon, sema Marsa bit wapi, napata kwa na shida. Maybe mtu huyu akona talent ameza home ya ameacha tu shule hivyo kwa sababu hakuwa na mtu and then hata parents wanaambia hey, kama umeza wewe endelea na shule fanya nini ulishe mtu huyu umeona na maybe mtoto akona na talent ya volleyball ama futi kwa ama nini so watu kama wao ndio nawatafuta nataka niwaambie kuna life after kick birth ya hata mimi kama sikuzaa home kuna life after kick birth kwa sababu it's not the end of everything unaweza pata mtu huyu to kwa to kwa na maybe a place kama place ya children's home ya kulea watu hii wewe endelea na shule ukimaliza kama take your kids ukiwa na kazi yako you've been playing professional volleyball for 17 years what message would you want to impart to young athletes i think the first thing you have to be disciplined ah uh, na ujue ni nini umekuja kufanya hapo and then another thing usione tu pesa one talent yako itakupeleka wapi Mchesa Kenya is the, not the end of everything Mchesa professional ni mzuri kwa sababu mimi nimecheza mpaka Champions League so i think in in Africa or in Kenya i think i'm the only lady nimecheza Champions League hakuna player mwingine and then also kama umekuwa player mzuri look for someone mwenye atakupeleka in a professional team ile in case of anything that club watakushukulikia Don't go for a professional club kwa sababu ya jina manini. Enda kwa kwa club ile hata ukicheza unaonekana. Kwa sababu most of now our players wanaenda unasikia alienda professional club but kwa the, 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 that club kwa map ama that country it's not like a country like one inajulikana even ki volleyball kwa sababu maybe your manager anataka tu pesa wewe uende tu kwa sababu pesa yake ni mingi kuliko yako so ukienda club tafuta club ile inachulikana usiende tu after umemaliza nini season yako ukikuja Kenya mtu anasema eh hata betangeka umeona betangeka Kenya kuliko kwenda wapi professional so take your time god's time is the best usirush kwa kitu so malkia strikers has qualified for paris 2024 what are your aspirations i think which is a four and then kushinda some matches sio kwenda tu kwa sababu kushinda some teams kwa sababu now the team is very strong alafu kwa na ile passion ya kushinda ya kila mtu anachitolea anataka ile kushinda masi moim thank you very much and all the best in paris 2024 becoming a world class athlete does not happen overnight years of training and dedication have raised these two athletes to the top of their game With both faith and mercy coming from humble backgrounds, they have demonstrated to young aspiring athletes that nothing is impossible. For me, Beatrice Marshall, it's goodbye for now.